A digital multimeter is a support device. It is required to support the calibration of the Ashcroft K17 sensors. And to use in a calibration, we have to first create a support device definition for the multimeter. We can access the setup support device through the drop down menus or we can use the toolbar. Now, a support device is anything that is required to support the calibration of a DUT. This includes digital multimeters, it includes pressure controllers. If you have a multiplexer, they're all support devices. This form is common to the DUT setup, common to our PPC setup, but we've got our, our uh, record label. It's, it's a text field that describes this entry. We've got our scroll bar showing that we're on record 204. Uh, we have control buttons down the right hand side, a new entry, copy an existing, save, undo, delete the record. This is not the close button, but it's the delete. And as device records begin to accumulate, it might be more convenient to click the Rolodex and see the instruments in a list view. So to create a new support device, we go up to the new record paper. We click that button and we'll begin to populate the fields. Here we'll walk through the setup of a Fluke 8846A. We will uh, input the header information, information, optional information about the calibration, how we're going to communicate with it, and importantly, what are the outputs. If we have set commands, we'll put those in, and finally we'll finish off with comments. So, On the header tab, a digital multimeter like the 8846, and true also for Keith Lee's and Agilent meters, is they have multiple outputs. Whether you use them all, that's, that's another issue. But for this situation, for this meter, there will be two outputs. Yeah, one will be for current, and one will be for voltage could optionally put a third in there if you ever need to use this to measure resistance. But simply stated, it's more than one output, so our support device type is advanced. In my inventory, I only have one of these meters, so I'm going to create it as an individual, give it the manufacturer name, the model name, and one of the three following fields is required for a unique identifier. The serial number is the route that I prefer to go. And at the bottom, the customer ID, it belongs to our, our demo pool. So I, I, I put the ownership there. So that completes the header tab. The calibration tab is optional. We don't require any settings in here to have a valid setup. However, putting information in these fields can make it available to the data file, which can provide a level of convenience. So with this screenshot, we have that the calibration was performed by, by Fluke on July 27th. It's due a year from then, and this is the calibration report number. The next tab over is communications. This tab tells Compass how it's going to acquire the data from the meter. And we're going to talk to it via the RS-232 interface. This just describes the interface. It doesn't describe if it requires a regular serial cable or a null modem cable or what type of null modem cable. This is just simply the interface protocol. And that it's going to talk to it on COM6 at these port settings. If this needs to be changed, click on the ports button and choose your COM port and your settings. Out of convenience, I run most of my instruments at a baud rate of 9600, a parity of none, data bits of 8, and one stop bit. The key is that whatever settings are chosen here have to have the same settings on the instrument. So we have to have a match. Handshaking sets to none. This is not a binary command set. That's actually going to be using a, a skippy command set. In the command timeout of eight seconds, change that to five for my preference. But again, just like on our other support device with the PPC4, if I send it a command, 
and Compass does not receive a response for whatever reason, after five seconds of getting no response, it'll time out instead of indefinitely trying to wait for that response. How the instrument terminates the responses and the commands that it receives are, are selected here, whether it's carriage return, carriage return line feed, or just line feed, or, or none. And optionally for different types of instruments, you don't have to, or you're not limited to these five settings. So we could just hit the comma key, and if the comma character happens to be the terminator, then Compass will tag that onto each command that it sends out and looks for it in the response as well, if you so much have that. All right. uh, common read and set interface here at the top. So we are reading, and if this was a, say, a multiplexer, which would have a channel set function, it just means that they both use the RS-232 COM port 6 settings. On the output tab, this is where a lot of the work has to be focused on, and we have two outputs. One output is to, to have the meter measure current. A second output would be to have the meter read voltage. So to create a new output, we have to go down here to the left-hand side and click on the Add button. And this screen happens to be the same screen that we would see if I were to click on the Edit Output. Now since I already have a current output, I'm going to cancel out the new entry and select my output of current and click Edit Output. We have a raw output and a final output and a tolerance. Compass works on the concept of a raw output as it relates to the final output which will be used by the program. In the case of the Ashcroft sensor, the raw output was an analog signal, 4 to 20 milliamps, and the final output was a pressure. Since this is a support device, we don't have that relationship of current to pressure because we are just simply defining the capabilities of the meter. So our raw output is going to be the same as our final output and that relationship is configured down towards the bottom of the window with this raw output to final output relationship window. With that being the case, our raw output type is current. We can choose from other types of outputs, but for right now we have current. And the native signal is amps, and this is important. Not all meters, when we hit it up with the read command, will, will reply with a, a value in units of amps. Some reply in milliamps. How your instrument responds is a critical piece of information that you need to first investigate. If I make the wrong selection and choose milliamps, it'll be obvious when I run the test because all of my, my final readings will be scaled by a factor of a thousand. So the capability of this meter is 0 to 1 amps. I don't know if it's 10 amps. Definitely for my application, I don't need anything greater than 1 amp of current. So I'm just defining the raw capability and giving it maximum resolution. Next tab over is final output. I'm going to put a record label that will identify this output as being current DC amps, something that's descriptive. Now the final output is current measurement. Now the subscript milliamps, that, that unfortunately shouldn't be there. That is just a compass typo and it's just current measurement. The bottom four selections are grayed out. These selections are carried over from the raw output tab because we're using a raw to final relationship that is the same. On the tolerance, I have the option of putting a tolerance and if I wanted to do some sort of uncertainty analysis it would make sense to assign a tolerance to the current measurements. Uh, relative to the tolerance of my DUT and how I plan to use this meter, I'm okay with putting a no tolerance specification. 
the uncertainty analysis is handled outside of Compass. So I get this and hit OK. And now I've created the output. The second step for this output is to define the commands necessary to acquire the output. And so that is under the Edit Commands button. These are commands that Compass will send to the meter and in some situations wait for a response. When the PPC4 support device was set up, we didn't have these remote commands. All of the commands were configured in the background as part of the auto detect setup. The 8846 is not an auto detect device, therefore we have to individually program the commands to be sent and how Compass should handle them. So this part of Compass Setup requires additional work, and the, the, the bulk of this work is figuring out which commands to send. And not only which commands to send, but how those commands respond, if they even do respond. Not all commands will send a response back to the host computer. For the commands that don't, they're typically categorized in the Compass world as initialization commands, commands that are sent one time in order to configure the instrument or to get it ready for measurements. These commands are, are the final result of an investigative work by reading the user programmable manual or the user programming manual. So to get to this step, we have to do some background work. So I'm going to move this window off to the side. And I don't have the user manual open, but at this point we would look at the user manual and find out that this meter uses something called Skippy command sets. Skippy is a standard command for programmable instruments. It's a common command set that's used across the industry for a, a wide variety of meters. And most meters, whether it's a Fluke, an Agilent, or a Keithley, if they use Skippy, will have a very similar command set. The, the task then becomes finding the command and just validating that the command and the associated response gives you what you want. So the pre-work that was done here was going into the user manual and finding these are the commands necessary to get a measurement. Mej colon current colon DC question mark will simply give me a native output in amps. I also found out that um, there's a few universal commands that are supported. Asterix RST, just a reset, clears away any existing ranges or functions or math functions that might have been set and left behind. Star CLS is, is a good command to clear the status register. So if there's any errors that were logged, any other status events, those get cleared away. I also found that it's helpful to put the instrument in a remote mode. You don't have to do this, but it tends to run smoother if I first put the instrument in a system remote. The opposite of this would be a system local. All right, so these commands have to be first identified and tested. And the way that we test, I'm going to exit out of this, uh, temporarily save this. And if you're doing a new setup and you try to save halfway through, Compass might be in a state where it doesn't think it's received all the information necessary for a valid setup, and it'll it'll, it'll tell you so and prevent you from closing it. That's fine. Um, just go ahead and put in some temporary information. You can always go back later and edit that. But I need to close this so I can bring up the remote communications tool. Now the remote communications tool lets me specify the, the COM port, um, the settings for it. See, I think this unit's on COM6. And I can test these commands. So let me uh, pull this up. And these commands at the same time. So star IDN question mark. I always start with this command to validate that I have good COM port settings, and I do. Now 
now I want to see what happens when I send the measurement command. 